What's up, D? Hi. Hi, Dr. Deloney. How's it going? I'm I'm well. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I think I'm not great. What's up? How's it going? I got a question for you. All right, bring it. How do I move forward in a sexless and troubled marriage without negatively affecting our daughter, our adopted daughter? Um, she's being negatively affected right this second, so you don't. Yeah. You don't move forward? No, you definitely move forward, but you don't tiptoe around this idea that, that the other people who are living in this house and breathing our air are going to somehow be unaffected if we can take this magic yellow brick road through this chaos. Because that sweet daughter of your feels this troubled marriage. Right. And feels the sexless marriage and the lack of intimacy and your frustration or otherwise you wouldn't be calling. And I'm sure your partner's got some other challenges to like that person, your, your daughter is just living like with one hand and one foot on an electric fence. And so there's, there's not a way to not affect the dynamic of the house moving forward. You just have to decide, are we going to move forward? What's going on with your marriage? Um, well, okay. So I've been married for 19 years. Um, and we've had our issues. Um, uh, if you just had, if you just had quote unquote your issues, you wouldn't be calling. What's actually going on? Well, in two thousand, I think it was two thousand eighteen or nineteen when he was diagnosed with Asperger's, okay. um, and that kind of hit the nail on the head. Um, all the symptoms that she told us about is, she said those were signs of Asperger's. So he had this all his life and didn't realize it. Um, and in 2020, we, we haven't slept in the same room since 2020, since the pandemic. Why not? Um, we kind of took sex off the table. Um, there's because millions it was of just couples too that, stressful. Yeah, huh? there's millions of couples that don't have sex that for medical issues, for desire yeah. issues, but they share the same bed. That's, that was a bigger move. That was beyond just just intercourse. Like when y'all took sex off the table, you lost something. What was that? Well, I mean, do we ever have it? We we never had emotional intimacy. We just didn't. We're not connecting. So when we took sex off the table, it was like, why are we still sleeping in the same bed? So um, he calls it, he's like, um, well, I'm finding myself and I guess we just needed some space. Well, that's bull crap. What's he finding? Um, I don't know. He said he's, he feels like he hasn't really lived life. Um, he blames the church for his sexual repression. How long has he been married so, to you? 19 years. Okay. That's two decades. Yes, the church has been guilty of, of, of teaching people that sex is dirty and wrong and bad and casting a shadow, a long shadow, for sure. Yeah, yeah. And two decades. At some point, you stop blaming and you be about healing and solving the problem. We haven't been able to move on since that. Since that, we haven't been able to to solve this. Sex has just become become stressful and just hard, just a chore. Um, so let's remove sex for a second. Tell me about. You said you have never been connected or had intimacy in your marriage. Right. It, it's just been a hard thing to do. Sounds like sex was the breadcrumbs that was all that was there for you to be able to have any sort of nourishment. And now that that's gone, it's just, it was revealing, right? Right. Um, your phone's cutting out on me. Uh, I didn't hear that. Right. Okay. okay. I think right. Yes. Okay. Um, so <laughs> right now, currently, so we sleep across the hall from each other and he's just kind of given the bare minimum. He's not really helping out with the household He's just he's just kind of moping around. He's not getting any help. He just seems depressed. 
Um, here's the deal. He D. doesn't want here's to participate. A, here's the D. D. Listen, I want to I want to tell you two important things. Number one, okay. I also know couples who sleep in separate rooms, mm-hmm. who's has to regularly repaint the house because their sex life peels the paint off the walls. You're right. you're, you're putting too much into that one thing, and when somebody hinges so much on a particular moment in the relationship that's usually a the, the straw that broke the camel's back. And underneath this, I need you to hear me super clear. You okay. can't do anything to change him. So you calling and asking, because I know I'm not the first person you've called and just rattled off this list of things he doesn't do. He won't be a part of. He won't get healing. He won't get help. He won't go talk to somebody and on and on and on. And my heart's broken for him. And I'm on the phone with you. Yeah. So what are you going to do? You've been doing this for 20 years. And you're how old your daughter? 10. Yet she's going to ringside seat that this is what love and connection and marriage looks like. Right. And you have a husband that's saying, I am not interested in working on this. Or depending on the severity of his cognitive impairment, um, or his neurological challenges, uh, he may not be able to. But here we are. 20 years trying. I know. And I know you're exhausted. And, and I gave up. Yeah, I'm tired. And I just kind of gave up, I guess. And... In 2020, I just gave up. Okay, it's 2024. That's four years. It's four years, and I'm still sitting here. Why? I don't know. I don't know. You gave up. He gave up. He said, hey, I need to pause and find myself. And that sentence just makes my skin crawl, but fair enough. He needs to find himself, and you quit. And then he quit, and then you quit, and then he quit. And then nobody's moved for four years. And nobody's moved. What do you want your life to look like, D? Not this. I got that. I want to be happy. What does that mean? I don't know how to be happy. What does that mean? Because happiness is a byproduct on the way to a life well lived. Happiness is temporary and it's never a destination. It's the journey. It's the path. I feel stuck. I feel suffocated. Okay. I feel like I can't move forward. I can't move on. Um, I don't. I don't know. We... I don't know where to go. Um, I don't have any like family support or, you know, I don't know where to turn. I'm just stuck. Okay. I guess I just need some kind of guidance. I don't know what to do. And I don't want my daughter like this is, it feels toxic the way we live. Yeah. I can feel it on you. I can hear it on you. Yeah. I just, can't breathe when I'm, I'm just under him. Okay, but I want you to stop that language. Okay? Oh, okay. Beha- behavior is a language. He committed, to, he's made it very clear he has not wanted to be married to you in the way that you've asked him to be married. Right. You're not underneath him. You're right next to him. Right. And so I'm okay. asking you, what do you want? Do you work? I work, yes. What do you do for a living? Um, I work for a local hospital. Okay. Do you have meaning and purpose in that job? Um, ten years. I can't. I can't hear you. your phone's cutting out. Oh, I've been there ten years. That's not. A, that's not an answer to my question. You've also been in a sexless, exhausted, completed marriage for four years. Right. On, on top of the other sixteen, like so. Tell me about your job. Um. It's it's kind of stressful for me. Um, I have good days and bad days. Let's say that. I just feel like I just go into everything with this anxiety and this stress, and I just have to kind of talk myself out of it. Um, I work from home, so... Well, lead with that next time. So you have a, a toxic home. You have a home that's full of poisonous gas, and then you work, yeah. you work there, too. Right. So I'm just home all the time. Right. right. And you have no yeah. adult interaction. You've got no community. There's nowhere where you go and laugh. There's nowhere you go and eat too many chips and salsa, too much chips and salsa and go, Ugh, and then someone makes a joke. Like you don't have any of that. No, no. And those are all, I don't know how to get that. How D, do I, those are all choices, sweetheart or all choices. 
Why don't you believe you're worth those things? Laughter and snacks and fun and long walks and a dog. Why, why don't you think you're worth that? I do think I'm worth that. That's you, why I'm calling. But you don't go do it. I'm saying these things. You don't go do it. What's, what's stopping you? What's holding you back? Can I tell you what I think it is? What, is? what do you think? I think it's grief. I think you've been yeah. trying to make this marriage work for so damn long. And I think you had this picture in your head that when, when 20 years of marriage went by, it was going to look, and more importantly, it was going to feel like something, and yours doesn't. Yeah. And grief is the gap between what we wanted to happen and what actually happened. What we want to be true and what actually is true. And you're stuck in that gap. And until you acknowledge it with honesty to yourself, your body will continue to try to solve for it. And it spins in a loop and it spins faster and faster and faster until you just can't move. Does that ring true? Yes, that does. And how do I just, how do I step out of this, this grief? Yeah. Well, I think you, I think you have to acknowledge that this is what is happening. Because at some point your body just hits pause. It just says, hey, all the things you're doing aren't working and we're getting sicker. We're feeling less well. So we're just shutting the machine off. And I think that's what's happened in the last four years. This is why I keep asking you, what do you want? What do you, what do you, what does a picture look like? Because that ultimately becomes your roadmap out. So if you tell me I really can't be married like this anymore, then at some point a marriage in in as much trouble as yours is in needs one partner, one of the, the people, one adult to sit down at a table with the other person and say, we need to decide right now, are we going to stay married or not? Because if we are, here's what must be true. And if we're not, I need you to tell me you're not able or willing to do these things. And absent that conversation, or you say, John, I will never, ever, ever divorce this man. And if that's the case, great. I honor that. Then mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you, you got to go live your one reckless, wild life. I mean, you got to tell me what that means. Is that comedy shows? Is that fishing? Is that cooking classes? Is that learning Spanish? I don't know what that is for you. But there's a whole wild world out there. And you get to yeah. pick. You get to pick. Yeah, and I'm just sitting here. I don't, I'm just, I don't know how to, That's just, I don't that, know why I'm just sitting here instead, taking it. Instead of figuring that out, because I think that might take a long time. That might be how you grew up. That might be a combination of how you grew up and living in an unsafe marriage for a long time. It could be any number of things. But let's don't spend time trying to figure it out. Let's spend time deciding what's the next step. Okay. Is it time well, to go back? Is it, is it time to go work in an office and get out of your house? Probably. <laughs> okay. Do you have a pen in front of you? Um, I have one over here. Okay, grab a pen real quick. Okay. Let's co-create a map together, okay? Okay. I have a pen. All right, let's write down explore jobs where I go into the office. Okay. And by the way, I just went and got a blood draw and I had to pee in a cup too. That was a whole experience. But the two women who did my blood draw and took care of me, it was early this morning. They were laughing. I was laughing. We were cutting up, making jokes at each other's expense. They brought me joy in a messy, traffic-filled whole thing. Right. You can do a lot of good for people if that's what you want to do. Okay. You want to go to med school? No. Do you want to go get uh, your nurse practitioner degree? Probably. Okay. Then put that on the paper. And before the night's over, I want you to explore. I want you to Google nurse practitioner programs in your area. And I want you to write down the length of time of the program and the cost. And if you know a nurse practitioner that just graduated, I want you to call them and schedule a coffee today. Okay. Do you like concerts? Do you like comedy? What do you like to do? You like to go I out? I like concerts. I like comedy. I like. Um, all right, then before I the like day doing is all over, those things. before yeah. the day is over, you're in Atlanta, Georgia. That is a hotbed of cool things going on. 
That's that's true. Th- then by this weekend, I want you to have a, take a girlfriend. I want you all to go to a show. I want you to go do a thing. Okay. Okay. And if your husband is not a safe person for your 10-year-old daughter to stay with, hopefully he is. Otherwise, you would have gotten her out already. But if you right. need to get some child care, get some child care. Okay. No, he's he's safe. Okay. Yeah. He's safe for her. And do you see what I, I want you to begin to to not worry about why I haven't? And yeah, just do it. The, the crass way to say this is I want you to start faking it until you make it. It's like going to the gym. There's lots of days I don't want to go to the gym, but I just go anyway. And then right. what happens is over time, I get in better shape. I get way, way stronger. I get in a better mood. And none of that was predicated on how I felt day by day by day by day. Okay. Okay? Yeah. I think you're pretty freaking amazing, D. Thank you. And I think your husband hasn't been well for a long time. And that's I, I hate that for him. And if he wants to call, great. But I think you have to just look him in the eye and say, I can't make you be well. And I can't make you choose to have joy and adventure and life in your one precious speck of time on earth. Okay. Yeah. And And I have to let go. I have to let go of this. You, You have to do two things. You have to let go and backfill it. Most people let go and then they just go back to the couch and turn the TV back on. And they replace emptiness with emptiness. Mm -hmm. I want you to replace emptiness with life. And maybe, just maybe, he sees a spark in you that he hasn't seen in a while. Maybe when you tell him, hey, at 4 o'clock on Thursdays, I go see my counselor. I'd love for you to come. You don't have to. I'd love for you to come. And by the way, I'm getting coming back to my my own bed. I'm going to sleep in the bed. If you want to go sleep somewhere, you can. But I'm going to sleep in my bed. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? I want you to start taking ownership of your home back. Okay. And if this marriage is over, if he has decided it's over, if y'all decide it's over. It is. Okay. That's grief. I want you to exhale and sit in that sadness because you had a picture of what this thing was going to look like and it's not going to look like that. Your husband has left you. He's just staying in the house right now. Right. Okay. And he's not gonna he's not gonna tell me. He's gonna wait for me to okay. end it. It's a pretty common thing that somebody tries to drown the relationship and then blame the other person. Or maybe he's his his um his autism makes it that, that type of conflict virtually impossible in his body. I don't know. I don't know him. Yeah. But if you know how this plays out, you know how it plays out. And so then it's about rallying some people that will walk with you. You have to have a couple of women in your life that will walk with you that you can text 24-7 and just say, I'm not, I'm not doing okay. I'm sad. I'm heartbroken. I need someone to go get chips and salsa with me. And we're going to go make this happen. Make no mistake, divorce is not good for kids. It's just not. And make no mistake, Living in home at home as div- a divorced couple that's that still hasn't has a certificate that says we're married, and the home is tense and chaotic and rage filled. That's not good for kids either. And so let's make the next right scary hard step, and let's be open and honest and have adult conversations. And only, uh, and you can only deal with your thoughts and your actions. And that's where we are, sweetheart. Thank you so much for the call. I'm proud of you. I hope you catch a glimpse. It's going to be a really faint light, but I hope you catch a glimpse. There's a lot in your control. There's a lot that's not, but you control the next move and the next step. Hang on the line. I'm going to send you building a non-anxious life. We'll get it mailed out to you. That's my gift to you. I want you to read it. Um, Your daughter's 10. She's probably old enough to get most of it. And I want you all to use that as a roadmap for moving forward. And hopefully, hopefully your husband will come with you. 